Silverstone is the venue for the second part of our Audi RS6 estate and C63 estate twin test, but Jethro conducted the first part earlier in the week in Yorkshire. Give me summary thoughts on what's best and what you like most. What's best? Um, best estate car is probably this, because it's bigger, but if you don't need the extra space, if you're just looking for fun, if you're looking for a sense of occasion, but it feels like a special car, I think this is it, because it's, it's like a little hot rod, the V8. It's more vocal, more instant torque, and it just feels like a little car with a massive, great engine in the front. Now, because I'm stupid and I have to look at these bits of paper because I can't remember things, it says here that the Audi weighs 2,025 kilograms. Um, but we know that Audi don't weigh them with a Bratwurst filled German on board and there's no fluid. So actually, this is 2,100 kilograms by anyone else's measurements. And the Mercedes is 1,795. So, 300 kilogram difference on the road? Yeah, it feels it, definitely. Um, not in terms of the outright performance, there's hardly anything in it. Um, but in the way this car rides, the way you can turn in and carry a bit more space, it just feels more fluid. This thing feels like it's fighting the extra weight all the time. It's okay. much crashier. Old Audi-isms. Steering. Heavy. Is this old Audi or new Audi? We've got two distinctions. Uh, RS4 and R8 are new yeah. Audi. Everything else is old Audi. Yeah, this bridges the gap. It's got a sort of six tenths, feels fairly new Audi. As soon as you start pushing, it all starts to feel a bit old Audi, really. It gets crashy, steering gets heavy and you get kicked back and you really feel the weight on the brakes. That's where it feels much, much heavier. What about the fuel economy? Fuel economy, um, well, they're both pretty awful. I think this was doing 17 or so. This was doing maybe, I think it was slightly better, amazingly, maybe half an MPG better, but very little in it. We started, it, started the day, filled them up. End of the day, we filled them up again. This had used 59 pounds worth of super, and this had used 61 pounds. So not a lot in it. This, however, had done a couple of burnouts. So there's not a lot in it. But you weren't on the road, were you? No, of course not. Good lad. Um, if you could have one of these for a year yep. with your young family, which yep. would it be? Um, I'd go for Merc. It's big enough for me. I've got one little kid. It fits all this stuff in it. Um, and it feels, although it feels cheaper, no doubt about that, it feels smaller and cheaper inside. Um, and this, when you first get in it, you can see where the extra money's gone. But as a, as a sense of occasion, because of the, the V8, the way you just, the sound, you've always got the noise, you've always got the torque. It feels like a hot rod. I'd have it, definitely. So we know that the Mercedes is the superior road car, but let's see how those abilities transpose into two disciplines at Silverstone. The first is a straight drag race four-wheel drive Audi versus two-wheel drive Mercedes. I know which I think should win. And then let's see which is quickest over a flying lap. And so to the drag race, a process uncontaminated by any kind of science nonsense. Two cars, the hangar straight, and a trained chimp to orchestrate the start. Given that the Audi has more power, more torque, and drives all four wheels, which would you expect to be the fastest? Gentlemen, start your dog carriers. A comprehensive victory. Someone said the RS6 was the fastest estate car in the world. It's not. The C63 is faster. Well, we didn't expect that, did we? And yes, we did it five times to make sure it wasn't an anomalous result. And it just wasn't. The Audi simply wouldn't go off the line. It felt like the torque was being limited. And we even phoned Audi and asked them if the ECU was doing something to protect the transmission from 479 foot-pounds of torque, and they said it wasn't. If you were an RS6 owner, being smoked by a C63 estate would be unamusing in the extreme. So, having lost to the Benz in the discipline you'd expect it to win, how would it fare on the full Silverstone lap against a car that was faster in a straight line, is smaller and is lighter? 
Let's have a look. Breaking into cops, pitching in, what are we, 85, 90 miles an hour. Out onto the kerbs. Manual gearbox would have been helpful there. Okay. Breaking into Beckett's. How much kerb can we take on the right? A shitload. There we go. It just wants to understeer everywhere, I have to admit. It is understeering everywhere and it's really delaying my ability to get on the gas. Back down the hangar straight. Time to consider that this is now our home circuit. How good is that? The home of British Motorsport, it's the home of Drivers Republic too. Hard on the brakes into stow. Brakes feel good, brakes feel good, but it feels big this thing. I think it's it's the spring rates that actually help you on the road of punishing it a bit here. The chassis likes to work with just a bit of understeer. Actually, the quick way round here, he says, is a bit of oversteer. And that is now just slightly oversteering coming out of club. It's gonna let us just clip on the outside, fit the curb, that's fine. Breaking into Abbey, please stop. Please stop, which it has done just. Oh, right into bridge. Is it flat? You must be joking, mate. It would be psychotic flat. But into Priory now. Oh, have to take more speed off. Doesn't like the direction change there at all. But if we take some speed off going in, we do gain something on the entry. Brake pedal's just starting to go a little bit long. I'm starting to sweat because the air conditioning's turned off. Nice and tight around Luffield. Can't do much here. Wind the throttle in now on the exit. I spun a Formula One car there once. And over the start finish line in a 221.3. Two twenty one point three. So summary thoughts around the track. One, it's not designed for a racing circuit. Two, it understeers more than I thought it would. Three, the supple ride, the slightly softer springs and dampers for the road obviously don't help it here. Four, fantastic engine. Five, really, really impressive gearbox. Six, oh, it's quite hot in here. Right, the Audi RS6, quite a confusing motor vehicle because it is just so damn powerful. It's just a big collection of numbers to me at the moment, I have to say. I, I admire it for what it is, but it's just this collection of vast numbers. I'm interested to see whether it can manage its power better than the Merc. Right, breaking hard into coppice. Again, I've got some. I have got some. I've got some understeer now. Oof! It, it doesn't feel 2.2 tons, but it, it does feel big. Can we carry much in here? We can. Up over the curbs. Right. This is where it's rolling less, and I think it's going to have an advantage over the Mercedes here he says, as it begins to understeer out onto the kerbs. Big old girly. Right, come on, down the straight. 130, 104, bloody hell, nearly 150. That's a bit on the quick side. Cool. Into stow. You see, you go through stow in an RS6 like that, with a little bit of a drift on, front end drift, not a rear end drift, and you're always thinking, I could have two Labradors in the back of this bad boy, and I could have a big rubber dinghy on the roof. Into the car. No oversteer this big one at all, but it's not feeling as much like a bulldozer on the front as I expected. It's shifting at about seven, is the twin tire. 
turbocharged V10. There's some traction help there because I can get on the gas a bit earlier, but it's made an awful lot of time quite simply because I can put the car in to a turn faster because I've got more faith. I've just got I've got more on the front end. I just feel that on that initial steering input, when I put the car into a turn, particularly the fast turns, it will hold it and it will. It will hold more speed going into a turn and it will hold more speed at the apex of a turn. Because it's four-wheel drive, you'd have to assume it's able to put more power down on the exit of a turn. Isn't that interesting? And we now know that the Mercedes has a straight line advantage. That's very, very impressive. If ever you want to see how dangerous a little knowledge can be, come to Silverstone in an RS6 and a C63 and prepare to have your preconceptions completely blown away. The Audi was fast around a lap, and the lighter, more nimble C63 beat the Audi in a drag race. We can start to deconstruct why that might have happened. Well, the Audi rolled less and had much more grip. It just had more grip going into a turn, in the middle of the turn, and coming out of a turn than the Mercedes. And equally, the Mercedes, though faster in a straight line, couldn't put its power down as well on the exit. I was quite surprised by that. The Audi also didn't feel that much heavier, so even though it's more compromised as a road car, if you were going to do track days, the RS6 would be more superior. Who's going to do track days in a smaller state car or a larger state car? I don't know, maybe there's someone mad enough. But one thing I would like to point out between these two cars is that one is wearing the latest Pirelli P0 and the other one's using a Yokohama. And if we look closely at them, have a look at the way they've grained up quite differently. The Audi's tyre, the shoulder's in great condition and across the whole tread blocks there's nothing too bad happened. It looks like a small animal has been gnawing away at the Mercedes tyre. It's just been completely destroyed. And given that there is a 3.3 second difference in lap time, I'd say most of that was down to the tyre not performing very well. Still, two well, awesome cars, and we'd love to have either of them.